We see in him a great humanness, not in any way in opposition to being a saint. Don Bosco indeed was a great saint. Don Bosco coming here was a huge symbol of hope and uh, blessedness for the area. I think people would feel a little more blessed today. It's a great privilege to have Bosco here and I believe that he is going to shower us with many blessings and reawaken again the great Salesian spirit within this country. just arrived at Dublin Port and in about 45 minutes time the um, boat will come from Hollyhead and it's carrying a very very special treasure that I will be here to receive and that is the relics of Don Bosco. I woke up knowing that today was a very very special day that something wonderful was going to happen. I'm here kind of waiting with great expectation to greet a friend. And that may sound funny because we're welcoming relics and many people sometimes maybe don't always understand relics. But for me really the relics are just a symbol of the spirit and of the presence of Don Bosco, whom I suppose I have been inspired by and I have given my life to in some way his dream. I see myself as a disciple of this man who was a great dreamer. Don Bosco realized God's dream God's dream particularly about his love for young people. So I'm here kind of waiting just to, to welcome a friend among us and a friend that I think will um, enrich us all during his time here with us. It was extraordinary to actually witness the fact that Don Bosco was now on Irish soil. And my heart, I suppose, was beating with a great sense of, of joy, a great sense of hope, a great sense that something wonderful is going to happen in all the different places that he's going to visit. Father John Bosco, but known to all of us as Don Bosco, was born in 1815 in a very small little place in northern Italy called the Becchi. Don Bosco's great legacy to the world is that he made tangible God's love for young people. My name is Val Collier and I'm with the Salesians now 50 years. 40 years a priest. John Bosco was a, a wonderful human being. At the time that he was ordained as a priest, it was after the Napoleonic Wars, there was a lot of poverty in the streets of Turin, a lot of young people, hungry, struggling, uh, homeless, and nobody caring about them. They were just oppressed, picked up by police, thrown into prison from 10 years of age. Many people walked those streets of Turin in Bosco's time and passed by. Bosco did not pass by, he stopped. He noticed these young people who were trying to survive on the side of the streets who were homeless and who were hungry. He, he saw them as children of God. We're driving along here now along through Fairview, the north side of Dublin city. That's really our catchment area. We're looking after young people from 11, 12 years of age, who for one reason or another are not able to live at home with their families. We provide a range of residential aftercare services and an outreach service for both boys and girls who are moving on from care and need support. 
this is the very work uh, that Don Bosco would be doing if he was around today, reaching out to those uh, in trouble, getting in and out of prison, uh, and, and, and going nowhere fast, having a dreadful life. And he could see that that could be changed. Christians have believed from the very beginning that the physical presence of saints has a mysterious power, a mysterious ability to bring us into contact with God. We read in the Acts of the Apostles how pieces of cloth that were touched by St. Paul were taken to people and they were healed from their diseases. That tells us something about the theology of, of relics. The physical bodies of the saints have been, if we could use the word divinized, made uh, holy by divine power, by God's grace. And their, their, that presence is an attractive presence, a, a presence that attracts us and also directs us towards God himself. The whole theology of pilgrimage, going to visit the shrines of the saints, was really connected to that desire to be close to the relics of the saints. And here in Ireland in these days, Catholics have the opportunity to receive and to pray in front of the relics of Don Bosco, which is a great thing because it means they don't have to travel or go on pilgrimage, and in a certain sense the relics are coming to them. The visit of the relics of Don Bosco is very special to all of us who have heard about it to this great saint. He is the patron of youth, he is a father and teacher for us all. During his lifetime, Don Bosco sent out missionaries to bring Christ's message of hope to the young and to the poor in faraway places. And yet Don Bosco himself did not travel too far out of his own native Italy. Now in death, he is present in a special way to all people all over the globe, including us gathered here. As we pray that we might follow St. John Bosco in following Christ. As the relic left Warnstown to begin the official pilgrimage, it felt like all of us who follow Don Bosco knew we were going to be brought by him to moments of wonder and joy among the people of Ireland and the friends of Don Bosco. To tell again his story and to renew once more the Salesian spirit. This pilgrimage was not to be among the high buildings and the tall cathedrals. It was to be in the quiet places and in the sheltered streets where Don Bosco would want to be and felt most at home. My name is John Campion. I am a Salesian priest. I am chaplain here at the University of Limerick. For me, to be a Salesian comes first, to be a priest comes second. And he said, listen, anyone who has ears to hear the gospel of the law. I was inspired by the whole spirit and charism of St. John Bosco and his whole vision of love and care for young people to be a sign and an instrument of God's love for the young person. As chaplains we see our role in terms of giving support to students and that support takes the form of hospitality here in our Chuck Falcha behind me, where students can drop in, have a cup of coffee, tea, have a chat, or sometimes students need the hospitality of listening. I think where we are now fits in very well with the Salesian ethos, because Don Bosco was all about showing interest in young people in the circumstances of their lives, empathising with them, and encouraging them and sometimes pushing them to develop their innate potential and I feel as chaplains we have plenty of opportunity to do that. Being a Salesian for me means being a weaver of relationships particularly with the young. 
when I was in secondary school, a Salesian sister secondary school, I was very impressed by the humanity of the sisters. And it was that humanity, I suppose, which encouraged me to read the lives of St. John Bosco and St. Mary Mazzarello. My hope for the time of the relic being in Limerick is that we will revisit the sources, not in the what Don Bosco did and how he did it, but what was it, that why, what was it that inspired him, what was it that gave him that spark, and that we might discover that anew for ourselves. As Salesians, we made a decision to bring the pilgrimage to the kind of places Don Bosco would want to go, to our family, to the young, to our friends, to all who have already felt the Salesian spirit, not to the big cathedrals of our cities, our massive auditoriums. Don Bosco wanted to be among and with people. Don Bosco made his churches, his youth clubs, his schools, where the people were. And that's why we chose to travel to areas with a Salesian presence, but also where we felt the need would be great. This short welcome rite celebrates the presence of St. John Bosco among us. The veneration of his relics contained in this casket gives first and foremost glory to God the source of all holiness, and reminds us of our communion with the saints and their powerful intercession. The body of Don Bosco is in part here in this church. He was a great saint. He preached the word of God. He was a great educator of young people. He started schools all over northern Italy. He was someone who loved God with his whole heart, who received the Eucharist. And in a certain sense, the power of the Eucharist made him holy, made him a saint. We go on pilgrimage to places where the saints lived, to be close to the bodies of the saints. But here we have the joy tonight that a body of the saint has come to us, St. John Bosco. My name is Mary Lawner and I live just up the road and I came tonight, I just wanted to have a chat with Don Bosco close to. I remember years ago going to a retreat in Salesian House and I heard Father Allen calling him Johnny Bosco and he, he sounded as if he was really close to the saint and I thought, gosh yes, Johnny Bosco is one of our own. Don Bosco believed that education is an art of the heart. His educational approach of reason, religion and kindness was the way to help young people grow and realise their full potential. For Don Bosco, young people were educated not just in a classroom, but even more so through games, sport, art, music and theatre. I'm dressing up to be Don Bosco and we're putting on a play for the whole school as we do every year. John Bosco's feast day today and we just want uh, to, to honour him. And uh, this uh, church is set up by the solutions of John Bosco. Really looking forward to doing the play. We've been working on it so hard. Uh, he's a very inspiring man. The solution community has always been very important to the school. They uh, we're, we're right on their grounds and, the, and, and I suppose they founded the school. We've always been very, very friendly with them and we've always had a great relationship with them. And I suppose very much the ethos of, of Don Bosco permeates what we do every day as teachers in the school. Um, they very much, uh, they're, they're, the solution ethos is very much, you know, to bring out the best in young people, to bring out and foster and celebrate the mind, the heart, the body and the spirit and I suppose in a way that encompasses it all, that kind of a holistic education.
as we travelled from place to place, there was a real sense among us that something wonderful was happening. We felt that Don Bosco truly was among us, listening to us, guiding us, healing us and inspiring us. The pilgrimage had taken on its own life, surprising us in unexpected ways. As we travelled west to Maynooth, the renewal we had hoped would come from the visit began to become a reality for us. Don Bosco coming to Menu for me really is something special. It's an opportunity for me to explore my own story and who I am as a Salesian and as a person. It's an opportunity to invite others to share that story and to tell their own story and maybe introduce them a little bit to Don Bosco, who I believe was an amazing man, a man who worked in very difficult times, who somehow managed to walk between church and state in a time of great upheaval, who walked at a time of recession and brought education to young people, gave them a sense of hope and an opportunity to do something with their lives and to be there for families and friends down the road. One of the great things about relics is they gave us an opportunity to talk, to share stories, to think about a person who really engaged with life itself and with his challenges, with his great gifts, with his great potential, his great projects. And Don Bosco was one of these real project oriented guys. He did amazing things in his life. But this is the man that's here. This is the man that inspires us to be drawn towards Christ. This is the man that invites us to go into our own journey, into our own selves and who we are as people, who we're being called to be as people. This is the man who says, I looked towards Christ, I gave myself to Christ, and Christ did wonderful things for me and through me. Tonight we're gathered here with the relics of St John Bosco. There's a really youthful crowd, and I suppose we're coming here because we realise the, the specialness and the momentum that is here and the real grace that's here. St John Bosco has been someone who's been a real inspiration in my own life. Um, particularly in the work that I do, I, I work on a retreat team with young people um, and St John Bosco being the educator and father of youth has really inspired me um, not to be afraid to be bold in the way in which we proclaim the gospel with young people um, and really just to, to, as he did, to really love them first and to then work on maybe evangelisation. Um, and he really just has been an inspiration for me in my life as a young Catholic in Ireland um, and I'm delighted to be part of tonight. And I simply want to say to you tonight, Don Bosco is making this pilgrimage to us. And his message and his wish and his dream was very, very simple. It said, what I want is your happiness. And at the end of the day, that is, I suppose, the cry and the yearning and the longing within each of our hearts. We want to be happy. And that is our birthright, because God created us to be happy. A lot of people ask me about this song, the, the, the Don Bosco song, or the hymn to Don Bosco, and how it came about. 1988, it was the anniversary of the death of Don Bosco. And I remember just sitting in my room, picking up the guitar and thinking about something to write, and the, the Don Bosco idea came to me, and an image of, I suppose, what his whole life was about. Here is a man who found a way to make the stars above our heads seem brighter than the day. I think the words that really struck me about him were spending night and day giving life away. Someone who really gave it everything, who gave his whole life to it. So it was a night and day enterprise, 24 7. And the other great word that came to me was the word freely, that he lived freely. And this is, is not always as easy as you think because a lot of times we really just want to be respectable. We want to do things the way everybody else is doing them. We don't want to break the molds. We don't want to step out to be different. But he did. I mean, he, he began his life as a, a diocesan priest, but he was almost from the very beginning, he was doing things that other priests were not doing. I suppose even 
the little catchphrase of what is here as a man is sort of th I thought was important because he is a man and he's this one particular man um, who came and he just by the way he lived his life and by his vision that somehow uh, so much came into being. You just get the sense of him in his own life as being fearless because he he was doing it for a definite purpose. He knew why he was doing it. He was doing it for, for the good of people, especially the young. He is prepared to lay down his life for them, essentially. I mean, it's very much the idea of Christ that you couldn't have greater love for anyone than to actually lay down your life for your friends. And these were his friends. I mean, I suppose something about that still, still um, touches me and uh, anchors me in some way to, to the dream itself and to what's possible when all the pieces come together. This morning, we're in the presence of St. John Bosco in a very unique way. Uh, Around this time of the year, generally we have a school mass in honor of St. John Bosco, but today we have him present with us in an extraordinary way. We open our hearts to be able to receive this message because it is a message, first of all, about God's love for each one of us. And remember also the people who he, whom he called to follow him, the Salesians. Because they're called after St. Francis de Sales. Sales becoming Salesians because this great man who was in the 16th century very, very strongly emphasized the importance of gentleness. So being people who are gentle with one another, and in that way, the love of God comes into our hearts. So here we meet the man himself, St. John Bosco. The Salesian College is an all-boys school. We have approximately 700 students, and our aim here, based on the teachings of Don Bosco, is that we care for the students, we help in their development, and we believe that they can fulfill their educational potential. The chest is covered over by the vestments, so you don't actually see it. And it's one of the right hands. In a Salesian school, it's very important that our parents and our wider community and our teachers understand that in engaging with our students, that we try and do it following those principles of being fair with our students, of being reasonable with our students and being kind. And that is the, is the teachings of Don Bosco, that you work with the young and you bring them with you. I think it's important for our students and for the staff to see the, the relic as um, keeping the tradition of the beliefs of Don Bosco in a modern time. It's also an opportunity for the students to see that Don Bosco actually existed as a person who has had a huge influence on the education and progress throughout Ireland in the Salesian schools and we're very lucky to give the students an opportunity maybe to take time out and pray and make a special request as the, the relic of Don Bosco is here with us for one day in Selbridge. Once people understand the story of Mary Kingston, they're enthralled by it. People are engaging and want to get involved in all this process. So it would seem to me that it is something which is achieving a lot and probably if we had sufficient faith, perhaps achieving an enormous amount. Because there are also people coming with their own particular issues and asking John Bosco to intercede for them, to bring healing into their lives in a whole variety of different ways. My name is Sister Dimpa Tlantse, I'm a Salesian sister and I love Don Bosco because since a very young age I have seen people just living out of his philosophy. St John Bosco had a system known as the preventive system which was based on reason, religion and loving kindness and he always looked to the heart of the child. And one of his great sayings was, young people must not only be loved by us, but they must know that they are loved. Because St. John Bosco means an awful lot for me, he's a saint that I love and I have great devotion to. I feel that the relic is a reminder to me of the great blessing that St. John Bosco is to the church. And to me, it's a, I suppose it's a reminder to be like Don Bosco, 
and to help make a difference. The relic of St. John Bosco is making its way to Leash this morning. As part of a worldwide pilgrimage, the relic is visiting 12 locations in Ireland, including Balnick Hill this morning and Port Leash this afternoon. Balnick Hill is home for me. It's where I come from. And we have had the presence of Salesians here in the school in Haywood for over 60 years. Up to this, the Relic of Don Bosco accompaniment was more like a job. Today, that has changed for me. I'm taking the Relic to my home place, to be among my own people. In some respects, the job element of the accompaniment has changed and become more personal for me. A personal journey which is looking for enlightenment but also a journey that hopefully can enlighten others about the life of Don Bosco, the times of Don Bosco and the work of Don Bosco for young people. It's a great honour for me to uh, be part of the welcome of the relic of Don Bosco to the parish here of Balnikil. The community here and the college have a great relationship because of education and many past pupils from the college have made it big time in the world. And indeed it's a great honour for us to have the relic here. May the intercession of Don Bosco shower blessings and happiness and help here on our parish and on our community and especially on our young people. When I came here 53 years ago, that was the first time really I heard much about Don Bosco and I've learned it ever since. And listening to Father Casey saying, giving the, the life of Don Bosco briefly to the children, I can see why the solutions that I myself became good friends. creating a banner which says welcome Don Bosco. My name is Parik MacDonald. Uh, I'm a Salesian brother. I'm working here in the south side of Limerick City in a place called South Hill. South Hill has had a lot of difficulties, a lot of problems like drugs, criminality, antisocial behaviour and everything else that goes along with that. A big part of this, which would come from Don Bosco, is that education is the key to a lot of these young people's future. Education gives them a place in society. Education gives them a future. Education has to be seen for these kids to be key. This is a great day here for uh, Port Leash and for the Diocese of Kildare and Lachlan with the coming of uh, the relics of uh, St John Bosco. We're very uh, conscious of, uh, of, of his importance indeed, particularly say for young people and the importance of the great work that the Salesians are doing in so many parts of the world. They're following the message and the example of St. John Bosco in caring for all the young people. And I think it's a very important message during this year of faith with the coming of the relics uh, of St. John Bosco that it's a, a reminder to us that we must try and, and deepen our faith and a better understanding of our faith and of course 
following from that, trying to live out the faith in our daily lives and please God, there will be a great fruit result from uh, this visit of the relics of St. John Bosco. <coughs> We really are honoured to be hosting today the reliquary of Don Bosco. Don Bosco has a big association with a lot of people here in our parish because many of them are past pupils of uh, the Salesian School in Haywood. And while we know that Don Bosco was the founder of the Salesians, uh, we also know that he was a secular priest like ourselves. And indeed, he's a man that's relevant for all times as well because he had such a great love for the youth. As a society, I think we've got to look at Don Bosco again and his great care for the youth and his great love, particularly for the marginalised youth, the youth that, who were being neglected. We would be foolish to think today in our own society that there aren't youth on the margins of our society and on the margins of our church. And hopefully the visit of Don Bosco's relics here will inspire many of our young people, but will also inspire us and many of the adult population to reach out in a more effective way to our young people. And perhaps uh, in a more reflective way, we should contemplate what practically we can do for to be more encouraging and more helpful to our youth population. My name is Paddy O'Neill. I'm principal here of Salesian Secondary College here in Palace Kenry in County Limerick. We have um, 38 teaching staff, 522 students. One of the key uh, components of, of a drives our education system is the preventive system as described by Dan Bosco. Reason, religion and loving kindness. One of the great things that Dan Bosco would say is always catch a student doing something well and it will give you a great reason to encourage and promote them. Catch them doing good things. By the time the students come through to Leaving Cert, uh, we find that they're very well-rounded people. They, they have a good um, variety of hobbies and interests, and all of those have been nurtured here while they've been at school. Not all children are academic. There are the students who need an emotional release and a release in a safe place. And I think it's important that the Salesian ethos gives them the safety and the, the nurturing um, to be um, valued and that their self-esteem is rewarded with good drawing, sculpture work, craft work. So it's not just for the soul. The work is of value and the child is valued that has produced the work. People may think, you know, that maybe because of our, the type of education system that we have, that it kind of, the academic side is kind of pushed aside a little bit. In actual fact, if you have happy teachers and happy students, it's a fantastic recipe for great learning environment as well. I mean, we have 95% of students who transfer on to third level college, which is, a, which is a fantastic statistic. So we have a great environment. Uh, our students do really well and when they're finished here we think that they're well prepared to take up their role as citizens of this country.
when he was younger and he lived with his family and he did tight rope walking. He set up a few clubs and then and then he, where they could like eat and play and sleep safely. He helps young people. Uh, okay, it was a patron saint of young people. Yeah. You the top line, saint of you down, Bosco, what the hell? The relics on Don Bosco uh, reminded us all of what a wonderful person he was, simple in the way he did things, but he met the needs of young people, physical through feeding them, through providing sport, catching them good, praising them, and going on then to form his order where people could join. I think the solutions are a huge gift to our society, a huge gift, and from say the early 1900s, um, coming to Ireland and setting up in Palace Kenry, um, and all, say, being here in Milford, the fact that this, the people who chose to join the Salishians wanted to work with young people and, and that philosophy and that spirituality of working with young people is such a model to a society. And I suppose from my own encounters with Salishians, there's huge witness to it and it's a, a lovely way to be. And you kind of think, well, do you know what, I think I'll approach students that way as well. And I know lots of people would choose to work with young people, but being a Salishian means that you've chosen that way of life and um, it's a marvellous witness to us and reminder of how we can be with young people. This is the fifth day of this very, very special time for the Salishian family in Ireland. And today has been an equally a day that is now etched in my memory. Limerick really is the first place, if you like, in Ireland where the Salesian spirit was planted. And that's why uh, Sister Mary Dorn, the Provincial of the Salesian Sisters, and I said it would be maybe a gesture of our appreciation that both of us would be here tonight. The second reason for me that um, this day of pilgrimage is very, very important is that Don Bosco, in a real way, is coming home. And the reason for that is that this parish and this church is dedicated to his Madonna, to Our Lady of the Christians. During the course of the pilgrimage, the relic travelled nearly 2,000 kilometres and everywhere we went, there was a great response from the people. When we came to South Hill in Limerick, it felt like Don Bosco himself was guiding us. It really felt like we were meant to be here. It gives me a great privilege to have the relic of Don Bosco, founder of the congregation, which I am part of here with us in South Hill. Don Bosco is a man of many talents. He's also a man of many things, and he has done many things for young people. If I was to say one thing to you, and leave you with one motto for today, going away, it would be, believe in yourself and follow your dream. One of the backdrops here has it. Believe in yourself and follow your dream. Don Bosco was always convinced that every young person has good. Every young person has potential, but they must find that potential, and they must know what that is. Every young person has a dream, but yet we must live up to that dream. And only I, only you, can live up to your own dream. When I heard that the relics were coming here, well, I was kind of anxious that they would come because I think there's a great message in the story of Don Bosco for all of us and for our society and community is that unless we look after young people, we can expect nothing but trouble. Many children are not looked after. We can see terrible sights of children here in terrible poverty, terrible disturbance, terrible anger, terrible emotional difficulties. 
And the message of Don, of Don Bosco, John Bosco, he, he, he still challenges who's going to look after them, who's going to care for them. And it's not just one person or one agency going to do it, but we have to do it together as a society. Everyone who has a decent heart has to, has to walk in and say, how do we challenge to make sure that children are decently and properly taken care of? But I think people will feel that they were blessed today and they were touched by something. I've seen people coming in there who came in for five minutes and did not go away for two hours. So I, I think it's going to touch people in a very private way and, uh, and, 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 and in their hearts. So in the parish, there's excitement, there'll be a lot of talk about it, and as in a sense, a feeling it was a good thing, and we have been blessed by the fact of the, of the visit. Throughout the pilgrimage, the drivers Matea, Perangelo, Ivan, Geo became firm friends of the Salesian family in Ireland. Having travelled thousands of miles in many countries with Don Bosco, for them it was not a job, but a journey that was more spiritual than it was physical. On the back roads and motorways of Ireland, they drove their precious cargo with a care and dedication that spoke volumes. Leaving South Hill, we travelled to the very place where the Salesian spirit first took root in Ireland, when four Salesians came to establish the Foundation House in Palace Kinry in 1919. What started there as an agricultural college is now a bustling campus with the Salesian School and Agricultural College firmly anchored here in the heart of Limerick. So let us welcome Don Bosco with all our hearts. Focus this evening is on the blessings which his present amongst us brings. Lord, you bless the world with the great saint Don Bosco as a father and teacher of the young. We thank you for the inspiration of his life, which attracted so many men and women who are willing to share their lives with the young and with the poor. Bless all those in the world who live with a Salesian heart Bless all the young people of Ireland and help them to grow up healthy and strong as good citizens and as good Christians. And bless us, the Foundation community, who have come to welcome and venerate Don Bosco's presence amongst us. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
It was fantastic that the students actually got to view the relic of Don Bosco. Great preparation went in with all our class groups to prepare the students for Don Bosco and his arrival here and the great things he, he had achieved in life. The students thoroughly enjoyed it. They enjoyed the atmosphere, the ambience, and having the congregation of Salesian priests here was, was great for our students to see. A very emotional day, uh, and it's great to see the Don Bosco ethos and atmosphere and spirit so much alive here in Palace Henry. My name is Margaret Cahill. I'm a Salesian sister and I come from Tipperary. We're here in Knock Shrine in preparation for the presence of Don Bosco, the spiritual presence of the man who had such an influence on so many people. It means an awful lot to me that Don Bosco is coming because it just gives me the opportunity to really appreciate the spirit of Don Bosco which is one of joy, simplicity, understanding, respect. I would hope that when the relic comes, it will be a renewal again of what Don Bosco meant in his time, and he still wants that message promoted today. Educating and caring for, educating in the full sense of the word, not just intellectually but educating every aspect of the human person and the way that Jesus would have done. It's a great privilege for the people of Knock and the pilgrims who come to Knock and for the Archdiocese of Tume to have the relics of uh, St John Bosco here with us. The approach that he adopted, you know, when uh, he was ministering, that's the approach that's been encouraged today. It's been encouraged by psychologists, by uh, educationalists and in many ways I believe that we are endeavouring to catch up uh, with uh, St John Bosco. For example, the, the element of joy that permeated his life and his ministry, that's something that we need very much in our culture and in our church today. For that reason, I believe that the coming of his relics here among us in a Tanakh shrine, that, uh, that's a, a very powerful message for all of us who are concerned about passing on the gospel to the young and uh, about trying to ensure that in spite of all that tends to weigh us down in our world today, that we will never lose sight of that element of joy. here in Knock, in Marian Shrine of Our Lady. It's our ninth day of our pilgrimage tour throughout the whole of Ireland. As people approach the relic here, people are coming with their petitions, in particular to come and to pray for their young people, because, uh, say, John Bosco was a great friend and teacher of the young. We see such numbers uh, turning out here, we're overwhelmed by the great uh, devotion, the amount of people I've met who, who have prayed to Don Bosco for years and years and uh, are delighted now to come and to see the casket containing his, his, his right hand that reaches out to them and blesses them and heals them in all their great needs.
he was very much uh, a man who worked with young people where they were at and that you know when it wasn't popular at all for uh, possibly adults at all but certainly for clergy to be running around kicking ball playing with children uh, in, in, in where they were living and, and, and what they were going through on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I suppose that's, the, the, for me, that would be the main, one of the main things about John Bosco that I suppose I carry around in my head. He has a very interesting life. I'm a teacher. He's the patron of teachers. He has a method of uh, teaching and working with youth. Um, and he's just a great saint. His work with young people and just being open to young people and meeting them where they're at, that would be very important and I suppose we have kind of worked on that with our children, so that would be important. I'm a volunteer with Savio, Salesian Volunteers, Ireland and overseas. We're in Minute today in St. Catharines. We're having a training day for some volunteers who are heading out on placement this summer to Salesian communities. I had spent six months working in a Salesian community in India. 
when I was in India, I had a very positive experience of living in community with them. And I suppose that nourished my faith a lot um, because it was through that experience I started to see sort of gospel values in action. So um, there was the faith and prayer side of community life, but there was so much social justice work going on at the same time. And it, it just made the connection for me, like how our faith can relate to everyday life. Then when I came back to Ireland, we started thinking around setting up a similar volunteer organisation. And I suppose Savio was kind of born out of that, to offer experiences for adults to go and work in so-called developing countries or in Salesian communities, um, anywhere in the world. And they'd have an experience of working with the young, working with the poor, um, and having a faith experience. In the early days uh, for Savio, we're constantly looking for new volunteers, trying to publicise what it is we do and, and invite people to, to share in this experience. But when volunteers come back, I think down the, down the road, the hope would be that they're motivated into some sort of action, um, remaining involved with the Salesian community here, youth ministry here, um, addressing issues around poverty, not just in India or Swaziland or wherever, but in Ireland as well, and that they're motivated into that action. Throughout the years, many Salesians have come from Belfast and have had a great impact on the Salesian presence in Ireland and in spreading the message of Don Bosco to countries all over the world. It was our only visit in Northern Ireland, but the crowds in the Cathedral of St. Peter's and Paul showed that the visit of the relics of Don Bosco had captured the imagination of the people of Northern Ireland. so many people this evening to welcome the relics of St. Don Bosco to our Cathedral Church. A church where Father Sean Crummy, it's Salesian, I think certainly not too far from where Father George White and Father Sean McFerrin, uh, uh, Salesians, who worked for some time in this diocese. John Bosco was one of the huge figures who left their mark on modern Europe in recent centuries. This man laboured to bring the gospel into the heart of industrial society, urban society, and into the hearts of those whose lives were being moulded in the furnace of industrialisation. He was a man of God who was a blessing to his own generation, but I think from whom we might learn many things as we seek to cope in our time with widespread change and uncertainty. Too many young people end up in mental hospitals prisons and an early grave. Too many are dying for want of a reason for living. That applied in the early 19th century, it still applies. It's so easy for adults to blame some young people for how they behave and say we must knock them into line and into decent behaviour. But adults rarely ask what's wrong with the world that we adults have created for them. So we pray that this night of prayer associated with the presence of the relics among us will be for us a time of blessing and that will renew our commitment to look after our young, to prioritise the needs of the weakest and to hand on to them a passion for the God who always has faith in us. Belfast was special, not just because it was our only visit to the north, but also because the cathedral stayed open throughout the night. And through the night, people came, young and old, to pray and spend some time with Don Bosco. For them and for all of us, it was an opportunity to renew again connections with our friends, Don Bosco's friends. And as morning came, once again, 
the wonderful journey we were on struck home. Lord God, in your providence, you gave us St John Bosco as a father and teacher of the young who worked with tireless zeal under the guidance of the Virgin Mary for the good of the Church. Arise in each one of us that same apostolic charity which urges us to seek salvation of all our brothers and sisters and who seek your grace and blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If Don Bosco were to be asked whereabouts in Dublin he'd like his priests to establish themselves, he could well say Sean McDermott Street, uh, because this is a place where the sort of mission that uh, Don Bosco was particularly interested in, in helping young people uh, to get out of a cycle of poverty, uh, not through assistance, but through training them, enabling them to be fully the people that they are. Don Bosco had this extraordinary vision and uh, in my earlier life when I travelled a lot around different parts of the world, I, in so many places, was in oratory or workshops or training colleges of solutions uh, and uh, one of the amazing things about them was the people who were there, the young boys particularly, uh, were always very happy. There was always that tremendous atmosphere uh, and that learning and uh, character building but also faith, uh, education in the faith, uh, all went together. Learning from the witness of the Salesian family, from the broad Salesian family, so many young people have had that experience, and for that I think we're all grateful. The Gospel reminds us that uh, unless we become like children, we won't enter into the Kingdom. Uh, and the, the way we look on children uh, shows us how we really understand the, the Kingdom. Don Bosco showed that. I believe we've, we've a, a huge amount to learn from Don Bosco's way of reaching out to young people. This is the second day of the visit of the relics of Don Bosco to here. It's gone very well so far and we've had crowds of people for the last two days and very well attended and uh, graceful moments for so many people. Children came from cluster of parishes and they came on pilgrimage here and they had their own little reflection and workshops here and um, it's gone very, very well and uh, there's a great atmosphere, tremendous atmosphere, and people are very welcoming and they have been welcomed here. I'm very happy to be able to come down to see the relic of John Bosco at my age. Yeah. Lovely. Well, I was baptised in you know, this church. The Chapel of Ease, there was a Tink church yes, before yes. this church was built. Yes. So 94 years ago I was baptised in our lady. 94 you know, years you know, ago here you were baptised. Don Bosco was a true dreamer. He had the courage to dream. This is important for us. 
He had the courage to dream and to think way ahead of his time. But his greatest dreams were not about himself, but about the young people with whom he worked. His dream was that these young people would realize their dreams. In this year of faith and through the visit of the relics, I'd hope that the Salesian community will be renewed and that it might bring to our times that special contribution of fostering the faith among young people after the model of Don Bosco. I knew Sean McDermott Street was going to be special. I felt very happy to be able to bring Don Bosco to that parish where I spent many, many happy years. Sean McDermott Street was very familiar territory for Don Bosco. Here he felt totally at home in this inner city parish. And the people responded with open hearts in welcome, in joy, in celebration, in hope that he had come among them, bringing them a message of encouragement and a message of assurance. Today, as a Salesian family, we celebrate Don Bosco among us. The secret of a Salesian school lies in showing real kindness to one another in the art and in the classroom. Salesian kindness comes in four shapes. Respect. Respect for every person in the school, because each one of us is precious and eternal. Understanding. Because we are all growing and sometimes get mixed up and make mistakes. Affection because we all need to feel we belong, from the youngest first year to the oldest member of staff. Humour, because in the end, it's all down to God, and heaven isn't so far away from any of us all the time. This morning we're talking about a real life hero who has come to visit us in the shape of his relics, St. John Bosco. He's here to let us know that God worked powerfully through him and that God can work powerfully through each one of us because God loves us as much as he loved Don Bosco. And we know that during his lifetime, God worked powerfully through him. And our prayer today is that he will continue to work powerfully through him today in his visit here to the Holy Rosary and that each one of us will get the graces and blessings that we need. I got to know Don Bosco first of the Salesian Sisters down in Caracan, so I'm very proud to have a few of the sisters today and I'm very honoured to be here with Salesian School Fernbank and to welcome the presence of Don Bosco among us here to this parish. Today is a very, very special day. It's a very, very special day for this parish. It's a very, very special day for all of us who in some way have been inspired by this person called St. John Bosco. And I suppose particularly then today, it is a day that um, certainly the Salesian Sisters, because today is really your day, and all of you that have been associated with them from the very founding of the, the school in, in the 1920s. So I'm very conscious that we're part of a great heritage, and we're honouring that today. And the reason that we're all here, because this man, in some way, his story, his life, his dream, has in some way connected with our stories, our lives, and our dreams. We belong to a family, Salishans by name. Don Bosco is our leader, to each he's the same. Our friend to the poor, the downcast, the weak, with a name everyone. I think it was fitting that the last day of Don Bosco's pilgrimage to Ireland was hosted by the Salesian sisters and their colleagues. Don Bosco co-founded the sisters with St. Mary Mazzarello to work particularly with young girls. And he asked that the sisters' congregation would be a living monument of gratitude to God for the presence of Our Lady Help of Christians in his life.
power, John Bosco, our friend. As we stand as father, teach us how to mend. Life sometimes broken, but in and by up, the love change each day into glory for life as our family of love. Keep growing our family of love. Standing on the runway at Shannon Airport, there was a sense of sadness that the pilgrimage was coming to an end. And Don Bosco, who was present among us for the past number of weeks, was now leaving. But also there was a great sense of joy, of gratitude, of thanksgiving in my heart. It had been a wonderful, wonderful week. As I watched the plane take off into the morning sky, I had a great sense that something wonderful had happened. Seeds had been sown during this visit of Don Bosco's presence among us. And these seeds will bear wonderful, beautiful fruit in the future. Thank you. 